You think you know something about the world? Listen to this man. He's Professor of International Health at Karolinska Institute. He challenges our prejudices and view of the world. One fact about the world is very clear, and that fact is that the world population is growing. Look here. When I, when I went to primary school, I remember the day in 1960, I was in the fifth form, when the teacher said, now we are three billion people in the world. And she wrote three billions with all those zeros. You know? and, 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 and we couldn't imagine how much it was. But the worst thing was that she told us that it was going to grow, the world population. It was very difficult at that time to imagine that we would double in our lifetime. And we didn't, we didn't trust that. Now we are here. We know quite well. I can even write 6.7. We know amazingly well how many people there are in the world. Because censuses, counting of population, has been made in almost all countries. Uh, regular at 10 years interval. And, and what is also this difficult to grasp is that we continue to grow. And we have to plan for being at least 9 billion in 2050. But that is the point where the population in the world may level off. So we may end up by being like 9, 10 billion in the world. And, and this, is, this is difficult to grasp in a time when we know that the pressure of environment is growing. So, so my students, they tell me, population growth destroys the environment. So poor children may as well die, they say. And this is sort of a statement they don't make in class, but when we discuss afterward, they say, why save the life of all these small children? You know? Because, because if, they, if they survive, there will be even more people who will destroy the environment, and, <coughs> and they, they will emit carbon dioxide. It will be even worse, and then we will all die in the end. Now, the problem with that thinking, with this thought, is not that it's, it's not moral, it's that it's wrong. And I will show you why. Here I have the world population, 1950. And the size of each bubble is the population of the country. United States, quite big, India and China. Most people already at that time, Europe, quite a lot of, of people. And when I start this, you can see what is happening. The population is growing, 1960. Look at India and China there, really starting to grow. And now also the African bubble is getting bigger. And today, the world is like this. But we have to go beyond the number of people to understand why population growth. And, and this I will do by going back to 1950. And now I will move these country bubbles into some, a new playground, like a hockey arena. Uh, and instead here, on the long side here, we have number of children per woman. Uh, the bubbles are the same. It's the countries and the size is the population. You see India and China down there. Uh, two, three, five, six, seven, eight children per woman. Large family there, small family there. And here the length of life. 35 years, 55, and 75. Good health up there, bad health down there. And what did this mean, you know? Being a country down here with seven children and having a length of life of 35 years, it meant that two of your children died already when they were young. One would die in the teenage. One perhaps would die at first birth, when she gives birth the first time, and only two or three will grow up to adult life. This is what it meant. But what has happened? Has then, has then this, this group here uh, improved health and still have big families? I want to change this and make two teams of them. A yellow team, developed team. Uh, and a blue team, developing team. Developing countries against developed countries. The concept that was started to use when I was in school. And, and this team here, what do you think they'll do? Will they have very long life and still big family up there? Uh, or, or, or will they start to move towards the center? At the center, there was very few countries there. Five children, 55 years, almost none. The world was really two groups of countries at that time. And now I will start this clock here, and we will see how the players of the developing <coughs> team will do, what will happen in, in those countries. Here we go. Uh, 
you can see the big forward. This is China, the left forward here. They tried to go this way, but now instead they improve life, they increase the life, they're using vaccines, they're using penicillin, you know, they're feeding their children better, they're surviving. And here family planning is coming. Remember 67, 68. And they start to diminish the family size, and China is leading in uh, travel towards that corner up there. <laughs> India is following there. And this is countries who have just long life, but they also start with family planning. And in the 80s, there are no longer two groups of countries in the world. They're all moving here. And this is day which we know quite well. Why are they going down? This is AIDS. This is AIDS in some countries in Africa, but they're also moving there. And when we come up to 2007 here, look, there are very few countries left on this side. So the students' worries eh, that, that if more people survive here, population will just grow. This is not so. This is not so. Look here. I change color on these teams because having two teams of countries doesn't make sense any longer. I put the color of the continent. The red ones are Asia. The green ones is Middle East, mainly Arab countries. Uh, the, the sort of yellow-greenish there is America. Uh, and the brown ones here, uh, orange ones here is Europe. They're all up there. It's mainly just some African countries which are here, and some other few. I'll, I'll show you an example of some outsiders. Afghanistan, not surprising. Congo, terrible civil war with a lot of sufferings, but people still, you know, give birth to a lot of children, you know, after the war when they lost their dear ones, you know. Yemen is up there. How come? Well, it's a country where women doesn't have so much right, doesn't have choices, you know. So they are healthy, but they still haven't applied fully family planning. And down there, South Africa, tragic HIV epidemic. They should be up there if they weren't dying so much of HIV. I'll give you an example of three countries here. We would make a special look at Sweden, Chile, and Tanzania. And, 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 this, and these three countries here, when I was born in 1948, they had seven million inhabitants, equal size. And today, today these countries, Sweden, it's almost the same. Nine. It's a pretty boring place. It's the same year after year after year. Whereas Chile has more than doubled its population. Eh? And, and Tanzania. And this is good data. This is good data. So Tanzania was down in that corner and, and, and they have come to this. So what will happen until I will die? I hope to live until I'm 100. So I count up till 2048. Eh? Sweden will still just be 10. More or less the same, you know. <laughs> and also Chile won't grow much. Chile has already reached that level where they have about the same amount of children born as people die. Whereas Tanzania will double one more time. Tanzania will reach the size of Germany and the Swahili language will be as big as the German language. It's difficult to perceive, but so was what has happened today 50 years ago. There they are, Sweden, Chile, Tanzania, 7 million inhabitants. And what has happened? Well, Sweden, they move on a little up here, not much change. Chile start now with family planning and they start to improve the health and they have good education and they go through all these political problems and now they really start to improve their situation <laughs> and they catch up with Sweden, whereas Tanzania is working hard here. The HIV epidemic takes down the life expectancy, but now HIV is going down slowly in Tanzania. They start to fight malaria and they've reached the position of Chile in 1950. And Chile is at the position of Sweden, 1991. That's where Chile is today. Eh? And during this time, remember, Chile doubled its population from 7 to 16. So it's no surprise that Tanzania will do the same. They will make a final doubling from 38 to 80 million. And it's not much you can do about it. Because those persons are already born now. And even if they get two child families from tomorrow, they will fill up and grow up to old age when they will, will have their wheelchairs and they will have their dementia and they will be like other modern people, you know. Eh? And that, that is about, that's about how, how life changed. Eh? The only ones which are down here still is civil war countries. The others are already way on. And there is no way in which we can stop this population growth by death any longer. So this worry you don't have to have that poor children should die. It's like this instead. So poor children must not die. Because if poor children doesn't die, 
then family size will be smaller, and then eventually you will have small families. The only way to stop population growth is to have small families. 